Um, I know there's there's people out there that that have you know uh, they they feel like everything is against them. The world's coming against them. They feel like family members are against them. They feel like you know they have enemies coming left and right. They have friends that are turning against them. Um, and these times, God said that these things would happen. And uh, but I want to speak a lot of things that is going to be very encouraging to very many. I, I know it is, and this is going to be a very important message, especially, especially, especially in the days ahead. This is going to be very important to make sure that everybody understands this. And I'm going to need I need going to need God's presence in order to uh, speak everything that is required tonight. Um, I'm trusting in Him to lead and uh, be my voice and everything. Um, I'm going to need it. The Holy Spirit's leading tonight. Um, but anyways, I'm going to go ahead and get started. And oh man, it's going to be a lot. I can I just can feel it. I can feel it. Um, we're going to start here and. Uh, Again, Deuteronomy 1, and I'm going to go Deuteronomy 21 through 35. Now, this, this is going to be so important because I, I don't know if anybody knows much about, you know, situation, a lot going on. But, you know, there's people coming up against uh, our ministry and threatening to tear it down with everything they got. I mean, Satan is threatening and we, we deal with not fit flesh, but spiritual forces and you know, and I, I'm telling you, there's people threatening me and, you know, just the ministry period and the people around us. It's just, it, it's getting, it's getting tough out there, guys. And I'm telling you, but God goes before us. And I want you all to understand how important this is because Satan's trying to stop, make me stop everything. He's trying to tell, get me to uh, take off my social media. He's trying to shut down everything, but I already know what's coming and I have faith in him. And let me, let me read exactly where I'm going. This is so important for many of you, especially in the days ahead. So let's go here to Deut Deuteronomy 1, 21 through 35. Um, so right here he says, he says right here in 21, See, Adonai, the Lord, your God, has set the land before you. Go up, take possession as Adonai, God, your fathers, has promised you. Do not be afraid or discouraged. Then all, all you came near to me and said, let's send men ahead of us to explore the land for us and bring us back some word about the way we should go up in the cities we will enter. The idea seemed good to me. So I took 12 men from among you, one man from each tribe. They turned and went up to the hill country. They came to the Wadi Eskol and spied it out. They took in their hands some of the fruit of the land and brought it down to us. They also brought back to us and said, good is the land that Adonai our God is giving us. Okay. Okay. Keep, keep bear with me. This is going to get, this is going to get deep. Yet you would not go up, but rebelled against the command of Adonai your God. In your tents, you grumbled and said, because Adonai t hates us. They, they were going into the land and they seen the armies. They seen the people that were that looked like they were against them. And they, they said, how can we go enter this land? They said, God hates us. God hates us. Hey, we're, they're going to destroy us. Our enemies are going to destroy us is what they're saying. And so they started grumbling against God and against Moses. And they said, where are we going? Our brothers have discouraged our hearts saying the people are greater than taller than we are. The cities are great and fortified up to the heavens. They said the walls are all the way up to the heavens. I don't know about you, but I've never seen any walls all the way up to the heavens. I mean, I've seen some skyscrapers, but I've never seen some walls up to the heavens. But they were afraid. They were afraid. They said, besides, we have even seen the children of Anakim there. Then I said to you, don't tremble or be afraid of them. I deny your God who goes before you. He himself will fight for you. He told the people he will fight for you. All you have to do is trust. Trust. He says, yet yeah, for all this, you did not trust and not deny your God. He's, he said, I, oh, actually, I'll back, back it up. I'm sorry. I skipped ahead. Just as he, he'll fight for you, just as he did in Egypt before your eyes. 
and in the wilderness where you saw how Adonai your God carried as you, you as a man carries his son. Everywhere you went until you came up to this place, yet for all this you did not trust in Adonai your God, the one who goes before you on the way to scout at a place for you to camp to show you the way you should go. And fire by night and by cloud by day. When Adonai heard the tone of your words, he was angry and sore, and no, saying, Not one of these men of this evil generation will see the good of this land and swore to forgive your fathers. Guys, keep bearing with me. I don't think any, many people are going to endure this, but this is going to be so important. And why is he saying there? People were afraid to enter the land because they seen the giants. They seen how multitudes of the armies, they seen their fortified cities. They were afraid. They did not believe that God was with them. How could people not believe that God was with them when they seen the miracles that delivered out of Egypt? They passed through the through the, the, the Dead Sea, right? I'm sorry, the Red Sea. They passed through the Red Sea. God delivered them. Many signs and wonders supplied them food in the desert. Supplied them food. So many things that, they, they, that God has given them. And how often can we forget our own deliverances that God has given us by looking out at the giants amongst us, the people that come against us, the situations going on amongst our lives. And we say, God, how, how can this be happening to me? And we lose trust. But don't you know that God, if, if we, without faith, we cannot please God? This is Deuteronomy 1. Elijah, one man, one man had everyone against him. How many false prophets of Baal and Asherah came against him? Everybody was praising. Baal and Asherah was hated Elijah. One man stood up against the multitudes and God went before him. He went before him. You have to know that Elijah was a righteous man that walked with God. If you're righteous and you're walking with God, he goes before you. You don't even have to fight the battles. All you have to do is stand still and wait, as he said in Exodus 14, 14. Look at here. <sighs> you see, because they did not go and trust God, and they came back, instead of going to the promised land, they could have entered it right then. Right then. But because they did not have faith and trust in God, they, they, did, they looked at what they could see, and they're like, oh, God, help us. Our enemies are against us. We're about to die. What have you done? We came out of a land out of Egypt. And now we're going to die right here. For 38 and a half years, they had to wander in the desert. Because God said, I promise you not enter my land. What is the promised land, guys? Peace, joy, comfort, love, no fear. You will not have fear. No fear. If you fear anything, guys and ladies, it's because you're not trusting in him. It could be you're living in sin or you're not trusting in him. This is about to get a whole lot deeper. Be careful that you do not fall into unbelief. He, we, in, in, in order by faith, we must, we must walk by faith and nothing we can do our service is not pleasing to god we can read we can pray we can go to church we can do so many acts of service and missions but if we don't have faith we don't trust and believe our faith is worthless and all our worship all our praises everything we do before god is worthless He's going to test. Guys, I'm about to break down some things so much. Don't you know? Don't you know when, when God, when the people entered, when they were being delivered out of Egypt, they stood at the Red Sea. What were the chariots? You know the chariots, the people that are on the chariots? 
The people that rode those types of chariots from Egypt were rich and wealthy, and they're, they're well-known, well-renowned people, well-respected, high up. They chased the Israelites, and what they say, oh, God, how could you do this to us? And they grumbled and complained against Moses. We're gonna, we've been delivered out of Egypt to die in the desert. And what did God do? Look at here. I'm, bear with me. This is going to get so deep. So deep. God, you're good. God, I need your Holy Spirit upon me, please. I can't do this without you. Okay. Look at here. Look at here. Adonai, Exodus 14, Adonai spoke to Moses saying, speak to Benai Israel. So they turned back and encamped before Pi-Hirath, between Migdal and the sea. You are to camp to the sea opposite Baal Zephon. Pharaoh will say concerning Benai Israel, they are wandering aimlessly in the land. The wilderness has shut them in. I will harden the hearts of Pharaoh. God is going to harden the hearts of every enemy of you. And God and his people. God's people. And if you're, you're walking righteously with him, he's going to harden the hearts so that the enemies will hate you and pursue you. And their pride and their arrogance and their hate. And their despite and their unforgiveness. This is why it's important to forgive. I'm going to look at here. He says, I will harden the Pharaoh's heart. So he will follow after them. Guess why he hardened them before? Because he would not listen to God. Anyone that does not listen to God, he will harden your heart, cause your heart to be hardened by the enemy and allow Satan to rule over your life. How can that be? He says, I'll harden Pharaoh's heart so he will follow after them. Then I will be glorified over Pharaoh along with all his army. And the Egyptians will know that I am modernized. So they did so. When your enemies are pursuing you, you have nothing to fear. Nothing. They're going to pursue you thinking they're going to tear you down. And in, uh, while they're alone, they're going to pray to curse you. They're going to pray to hurt you. They're the thinking that they're coming against you. And they're do, do, act doing a service for God, but they're not serving God, but the devil himself. It could be a family member. It could be a friend. It could be a colleague. It could be anybody in this world. Look at here. He says, I'll be glorified. And how? Watch, watch. When the king of Egypt was told that the people had fled, Pharaoh and his servants had a change of heart. They had a change of heart toward the people. And they said, what is this we have done that we let Israel go from amongst us? So he prepared his chariots and took his people with him. He took 600 of the finest chariots along with the chariots of Egypt and captains over them. I did not harden the hearts of Pharaoh, the king of Egypt. So he pursued Benai Israel. And God is going to harden the hearts of any enemy to pursue you. For Benai Israel went out with the right his high hand, but the Egyptians pursued them with all the horses and chariots in the, in, of Pharaoh, as well as the charioteers and his army, and overtook them as they were encamped by the sea, beside Pi-Hararoth, besides Baal Zephon. When Pharaoh drew near, Benai Israel lifted up their eyes, and behold, the Egyptians were marching after them. So they were terrified. There he goes again. They were terrified, seeing with their eyes. They were terrified. And look, look what he says. Look what they said. And Benai Yisrael cried out to Adonai, and they said to Moses, Have you taken us away to die in the wilderness? Because there were no graves in Egypt? Let us alone so that what we may serve the so that we may serve the Egyptians? It was better for us to serve the Egyptians than to die in the wilderness. Look at that. It was better for us to serve false gods than to be pursued by our enemies. They lost all hope in God. They said, we're going to die right here rather than trusting in God to deliver them from all things. 
Many people today are not trusting in God to deliver them in all situations. Sickness and illness, financial conditions, death of a loved ones, job loss, persecution, enemies pursuing them, threats of, of lawsuits. These things that are coming on these people are not, it's not of God, but your enemies. And he's hardening their hearts like Pharaoh. Look at here, do not lose hope. Do not lose hope. They said to, he, look, look at here, he says, but Moses said to the people, don't be afraid. Stand still and see the salvation of Adonai. See the salvation of the Lord, which he will perform for you today. And you have the Egyptians today, but you'll never see them again ever your enemies you'll never see again look at here Adonai will fight for you while you hold your peace then Adonai said to Moses you are too why are you crying out to me he says that to Moses tell Benai Israel to go forward lift up your staff stretch out your hand and why is it the right hand that's always the strength that's why Yeshua sits at his right hand the strength of God. He says, hold out your staff and hand over the sea and divide it. Then Benai Israel will go into the midst of the sea on dry ground. Then I, behold, will harden the hearts of the Egyptians and they will go after them so that I will be glorified over Pharaoh and all his army, his chariots and his horsemen. Then the Egyptians will know that I am Adonai when I have been glorified over Pharaoh, his chariots and his horsemen. Then the angel of God who went before the camp of Israel moved and went behind them. Also the pillar of the cloud moved from in front and stood behind them. God was protecting them. And so came between the camp of Egypt and the camp of Israel. There was a cloud and there was darkness over them. And yet the light of the night over there, neither one came near the other all night long. Then Moses stretched out his hand over the sea. I did not drove the sea back with a strong east wind. Throughout the night, and it turned the sea into dry land. So the waters were divided, and Benai Israel went into the midst of the sea into dry ground, and the waters were walls to them, on the right or the left, where to remain on the narrow path, not veering left or right. This is what he tells us. Remain on the narrow path, because what happens if you go left or right? You will drown. You will drown. Look, you will drown like Egypt. But the Egyptians pursued and went after them into the midst of the sea. All Pharaoh's horses and chariots and his horse men. Now it came about during the, the morning. Watch what Adonai. Watch what Adonai looked at the armies and the Egyptians threw the pillar of the fire and the cloud and caused the army of the Egyptians to panic. He took off the chariots wheels and caused them to drive heavily. So the Egyptians said, get away from the presence of Israel. They were afraid. You see this? For Adonai fights for them against the Egyptians. Then Adonai said to Moses, stretch out your hand over the sea so that the waters come back over the Egyptians, over the chariots and over the horsemen. So Moses stretched out his hand over the waters and the sea returned in the strength and break, uh, at the break of dawn and the Egyptians were fleeing from it. But Adonai overthrew them in the midst of the sea. The waters returned and covered the chariots and the horsemen and the entire army of Pharaoh that went after them into the sea. Not one of them remained. But Benai Israel had walked on dry land in the midst of the sea, and the waters were like walls to them, on the right hand and on their left. So Adonai saved Israel that day out of the hand of the Egyptians, and Israel saw the Egyptians dead on the seashore. When Israel saw the great work of Adonai did over the Egyptians, the people feared Adonai, and they believed in Adonai and his servant Moses. Look at that. God was glorified. When people had the fear of God, and they repent and they, they glorify him. They see the mighty works that he has done. They're going to see the fear of God and they're going to glorify his name. Let God be praised. This is about to get so much deeper. And people today, I need to drink. I'm thirsty. Look here. You see... It just right there, and I'm gonna I'm gonna back back force to what I was saying in Deuteronomy. People will say, 
when they sent the spies into, in, into the lands to scope it out, what did they say in Deuteronomy 1? They came back and the people were saying they're giants. They started lying. They're lying saying there's giants. The cities were up to the heavens, right? They said the cities were up to the heavens. You brought us out of Egypt to, to die here. And today people forget the deliverances that God has given them. Will you remain in unbelief? Will you remain in the desert? If they were just trusting in God, they would have entered the promised land right then and God would have defeated his enemies. They told Israel, they told Benai Israel, they told him, if you trust in me, I will take care of your enemies. But look what they did. Instead of trusting in God and faith, they came back with fear. They came back with fear. Some people today are going back to their sins because they're in fear. They need that comfort. They need that pleasure. They need that, that instant pleasure and gratification right now because they don't trust in the one that has delivered them and can deliver you. So God said, because they didn't trust, they're gonna roam in the desert for 38 and a half years. You want to roam in the desert for 38 and a half years and not enter the promised land? Look at here. Without faith, you cannot please him. The Sea of Galilee, in Matthew 13, 58, he says I, I could, he could only do few works there, few miracles because of the people's unbelief. Because of the people's unbelief, Yeshua, Jesus could not do the works because nobody had faith. And he can't work in your life if you don't have faith. What is belief? Belief is trusting in him in all things, through all things. Knowing that you have no power, you can't do anything on your own. The only strength you have is in him and through him and by him. You know without him, you are nothing. You are only a piece of dust, ashes on this earth. Naked you came in in this life and naked you will return. Dust to dust. But God, Yeshua, Jesus, he will deliver us from all things. Just as he's overcame all things, he will deliver you through all things. God will go before you. Luke 171, here's salvation for our enemies and from the hand of all who hate us. God will deliver us. He will deliver us. He will rescue us from our adversaries with its loving kindness and its everlasting peace. He tells us to enter his rest. David said, I will fear no evil. Your rod and staff strengthens me. It's Psalm 23, 4. That was a beautiful thing. He said, your rod and your staff, just as Moses, he says, you strengthen me. God, even though I walk through the valley in the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. You are with me. David had his enemies after him day after day, a point where everyone was against him. Enemies coming left and right. Don't you know God delivered him out of all? People died. 180,000 armies rose up even against Israel at one point. Died in the desert. Dead bodies instantly. You don't glow over your enemies or pray praise when they are dead, but you give glory to God and you thank him because he's looking out for you. He looks out for you to show his power that she might get more glory. Don't forget about the deliverances he's done in the past. Some of you have. You forgot how God has delivered you. He's brought you to a better job. When you thought nothing else was going to happen, your car was broke down, you were without finances, you're about to be homeless, and God provided for you. You had nothing to eat, and God has fed you. You had no, you, you didn't have money for clothes, but God has clothed you. 
You were having all hope. People, some people are on their hospital beds, and God has delivered you from sickness and illness, from near-death experiences. God has delivered you. Don't forget what God has done for you. Don't forget your deliverances. He's delivered you from sin. Don't forget those deliverances from sin. Don't go back to Egypt. Don't take delight in what Egypt has brought you. That life should be dead and purified through the Red Sea. That water has cleansed you. By the grace of God, you have enemies. He, while they're going through the desert, he had enemies, but he says, I'll go before you if you trust in me. Some of you have enemies today, and he will go before you if you trust in him. But if you try to take in your own hands, try to make it work in your own power, you try to seek your own way to bring to make sure that you, you have, you're successful, you overcome this battle. When you try to take things in your own hand, you don't have belief. But when you remain in his rest, you will have peace, stress, depression, anxiety. These things come from unbelief. These things come when you don't have faith and you're not walking in the power of God and his grace. Trusting in him to deliver you in all things. Trusting him by faith that he will overcome all battles. You don't try to walk over that mountain yourself. You allow him to bring you over the mountain and go before you. He will level that mountain by faith. If you have faith as small as a mustard seed, you can move mountains and he will level that mountain clearly to the ground. So that you can walk on level path. You don't have to go to the top of the mountain to seek it. It will level on level path, clear so that you can walk straight on the narrow path with him. But you must trust. He will fight all battles for you. He says, I will never leave you nor forsake you. How many believe that? Some of you don't believe that because you're going back to your sin. God says, I'll never leave you nor forsake you. If you know he won't leave you, you won't go back to the pleasures of the instant gratification. You remain in his feet. Peace. Hebrews 4 says, beware that you don't enter his rest and be judged. Like those in Egypt. Like those in children in Israel. In the desert. Because they did not trust. He asks, in Luke 18, 18, he says, Will I find faith when I return? God. God, we need you. Our people need you. Will he find faith? When he returns, he, he, he couldn't do the work, so he couldn't do the many miracles and signs as he wanted. Matthew 13, 50, in the Sea of Galilee, he could not do it because people did not have faith. Little faith people had. And what is the promised land, guys? Promised land is peace, it's love, it's joy. It's trust. And it's walking without fear. Walking without fear. You don't fear. Remember, God says when people's hearts start to fail them for what's coming upon the earth, then it was becoming in all power and glory. People today. Are having fear for everything coming. People are fearing all kinds of things. All kinds of things that's coming upon the earth. But they're not trusting in him. Not trusting in him. They're not in peace. A lack of faith and belief is results in presumptuous. It takes it, it results in taking things in your own hands as if it's faith. You'll say it's faith, but it's actually arrogance and pride. You say, I can do this by myself, but you believe that God is with you. 
but you're still taking it in your own hands rather than allowing him to fight the battles. Don't you know that there's been enemies? God forbid that these happen. You don't go over these things or wish it upon your enemies. He says to pray for your enemies. Pray for your enemies. Why? So that your heart do not become hardened like Pharaoh in Egypt, so that you'll be handed over to the enemy. Why does he say to warn people not to become, why not to be teachers or preachers that are new believers? Because you can become prideful and arrogant and have that same desire as Pharaoh and many others that have become arrogant before and died. How many times have those new Torah have died for pursuing God's people? But not having the fear of God. Every single one, over 600, there was actually 1.2 or 600,000 people between that number right there. 1.2 million, 600,000 that came out of Egypt to enter the promised land. All those have been delivered, seen the signs and the wonders, been has seen God's deliverances, and they still lost faith. They still lost hope. They still moan and complain and groan over all their situations rather than praising God in the midst. You see, Hebrews 4, let us fear then, though a promise of entering his rest is left open, it's left open, guys. Some of you would seem to have fallen short. Don't fall short. Don't fall short. For we have also have had good news proclaimed to us, just as they did. But the word they heard did not help them. Look at here. We have, we have the Holy Spirit living in us. Back then, it would come upon them. It would come upon them. You have a living in you. If you have a living in you, you have no excuse. People we dreamed and longed to hear and see and, and, and know and the things that we are hearing and knowing right now and seeing. But the word that did not help them because they were not unified with those who listened in faith. For we who have trusted are entering into that rest. It is just God, just as God has said. So in my wrath, I swore they would never enter my rest even though his works were finished since the foundations of the world. For somewhere he has spoken about the seventh day in this way, and God rested in the seventh day for all his works. And again, in this passage, they shall never enter my rest. So then it remains some to enter, enter into it. Yet those who formerly had the good news proclaimed it to them did not enter because of disobedience. They did not enter the rest because of disobedience. They heard the good news. They heard about Yeshua. They heard about Jesus. These people back in, in, in the days of Moses, they went to the desert. They heard the good news. They heard about the deliverance. They seen the deliverance. They've been delivered. They testified about the laws and the commandments and how God has delivered them out of Egypt. He did, They led them by faith, but they did not keep the faith of God because they were walking in disobedience. Again, God appoints a certain day today saying through David after so long a time, just as has been said before today, if you hear my voice, do not harden your heart. Do not harden your heart. For if Joshua had given them rest, God would have, have spoken of another day later on. So there remains a Shabbat rest for the people of God. For the one who has entered the, God's rest has also ceased from his own work. You see that? Cease from trying to do the works by themselves. They must be by faith. I'm telling you, when hell rises up against you, just as it's coming against me, it's coming against our ministry, guys. Hell is going to come against you. It's not going to come against those that are not doing anything for God. Hell is going to come against you. He's going to try to bring the living fear into you. But let me tell you, God goes before you, and the battle's already won. You just have to believe it. Just as you have overcome sin, you just have to believe it. Let us make every effort 
to enter that rest so that no one may fall short. The same pattern of disobedience. Don't fall short. For the word of God is living and active and sharper than two-edged sword, piercing right through the separation of the soul and spirit, joints and marrow, and able to judge the thoughts and intentions of the heart. Don't harden your heart if people, if you're feeling conviction. If you feel like this is right, I need a change right now. Don't harden your heart lest you become like Pharaoh. And guess what you're going to do? You're going to pursue God's people. You're going to pursue everything that's righteous and just and holy and good. And that's, that's about Torah keeping righteous living. By faith. You're going to rise up against it because you're going to hate it. You're going to shun it. You're going to pursue all lust and, and desires and greed and licentiousness and all any every more, more immorality and greed and selfish desire and ambition. You will go in that path and you will end up drowning in the Dead Sea because he will wipe you out eventually. Just as a prerequisite, as a, as, a, as, a, as a warning of what happened to the children of Egypt, what happened to people that were living in Egypt, and as the people that pursued God's people, Pharaoh and the Egyptians, they all died without rest. Without rest. Let it cut you. Let it cut. Don't put a bandaid on and cover up. Let it cut you so that you may change, so that he may heal you. By his wounds you are healed. By his stripes you are healed. By his blood you are healed. But she can't do it if you won't. You keep putting a bandaid on it. Going back to your sin, your love of money, your greed, your idolatry, your sexual morality, these things will not deliver you. Through a temporary satisfaction, it's, it's remaining in Egypt. But the blood of the door, lamb of the door is not on the doorpost of your hearts. You're not walking in faith. You're the same people that looked out at the, the armies. And you said, there's giants. The sin is giant. These people coming against me are giant. God, look at these walls. There's so, I have so much sin. I'm going, there's so much, God. Some of you are saying that. But I can't overcome it. And you're afraid. So you go right back to the desert. Because you didn't trust. God, I love you, God. Thank you. Look at here. And able to judge the thoughts and intentions of the heart. No creature is hidden from him, but all are naked and exposed to the eyes of him to whom must give and count. Guys, I don't know anything about you, nor do you know anything about another person except what the Spirit of God speaks through you. And when you when it, when it exposes what is hidden in somebody's heart, and these people want to fight against you, if you're fighting against somebody that's telling you to live holy, listen, listen, your life depends on it. Your eternal life depends on it. God, your eternal life depends on it. We know that he gives us boldness and grace. And grace teaches us to renounce ungodliness and deny ungodliness and have self-control and upright holy lives until the coming, till he returns. Guys, be careful. Don't fear. Don't fear. Don't fear the death or the loss of goods, but fear the one. Don't fear the one that can destroy. Don't fear the one that can destroy your flesh. Meaning, take your take, pursue you in death. Take your goods. Take your money. Take your house. Take your car. Take everything you own. Imprison you. Don't worry about these people. He says, fear the one that can steal your soul. Kill the soul and spirit, the flesh and the spirit. Don't fear those. That, even your friends, there's friends and families around you. There's people around you that want to take you, bring you back into sin. You're saying, oh, I'm afraid of their judgment, what they think of me, and I want to bow down to them. You can't bow down to man. If you bow down before God, no man or woman takes a knee to any man except God. You bow before God, you're going to bow before the Father, and that's it. 
No fear of any man. You don't care what they're going to take from you. You don't care what they're going to do. You know God goes before you. He will deliver you. And he has already won the battle. All you have to do is stand and hold out your hand. Just like Moses in Exodus 14, 14. Say, I will succeed because I trust in God. God will deliver me through all battles. He is my savior. He is my delivery. He is my might. He is my strength. He is all glory and receives, deserves all glory and praise and honor. All grace and glory goes to him. God has already won the battle. You tell Satan next time he tells you, you won't succeed. You warn him and tell him God has already won. Look at Revelation. He has already won the battle. He has already won. All you have to do is stand and be patient and wait for him. Because God goes before you and he will deliver you. Glory and honor to God. Praise you, God. Whew. Look at here. Because you, you see, people are afraid to do the will of God. They're afraid of what the enemy might take from them. They're afraid of what might come upon them. They are afraid. But if you know God is with you, you are not afraid. They're afraid of losing something. They're afraid of judgment. They're afraid of what people will think of them. They're afraid of their name being destroyed or, or their, their image about them is being destroyed. They're afraid of having lots of goods and money because they worked so hard in this life because they live in an Egypt and they hate God. You can pray. You can, you can go to church. You can read and study all you want. But your faith, he said, will be tested by fire. And what stood before Egypt and the Israelites? What tested in the desert? Heat. What was in the desert? You had, there's thistles and thorns, right? The promised land, there was not. What was Matthew 13? Some were choked out by the thistles and thorns. Choked out by the cares and the worries of this life. Choked out by the pleasures and the luxuries and the love of this life. The greed, the money. Climbing that career ladder at your job. These things were in your life. People were chasing after these things. Some people murmur and complain because that's their life. Your whole entire life, you sit there and murmur and complain. Murmur and complain about everything that goes on in your life, the littlest things. Don't you know in Deuteronomy 144? Don't you know that the, the, the bees, the, the people chase the people like bees? They chased the Israelites like bees because they didn't trust in God. They turned away. If instead of going to the promised land, what happened? Because they're afraid of their enemies. They're afraid of what's happening. They're afraid of losing their life. They're afraid of giving it up. They're afraid of losing what they had and possessions. So they turned around and guess what happened? The enemies pursued them like bees. And some of the enemies pursuing some of you like bees. And you're running because you're afraid of getting stung. Because some of you are running... You're already getting stung by sin all day long. All day long because your faith is not and trust is not truly in God. Some people are returning back to their pleasure, their sports, their materialisms, entertainment, their idolatry, their sexual morality. They're going back to these things. Some people have to shop in order to feel good. Some people have to get so many luxury clothes in order to feel good about themselves. They care about their image more than the image of God living in them. They don't care to die to themselves or lose their life. They, they, they're afraid because they look out at the giants ahead of them. They're afraid to walk with God because they are afraid to walk alone and what that might entail. So they follow the masses. And what happened to the masses? Even the Israelites in Egypt, they died in the desert. The same people following the masses. But few actually entered the, the, the promised land. I trusted. I trusted. They didn't want to go out to Egypt. They wanted. They trusted in God that they would have a better promise for them. Just as Abraham left Ur, the, the, the city of Ur, he believed in better promises. He lived in tents, not any foundations built by human hands. He did not build a house for, for human hands because he knew God had better promises. And that's not where God wanted him. God had a greater promise for him. You got to know that God has a better promise than you. You don't take any. Your, your roots are not firmly planted anywhere in this life, anywhere in this world, anywhere you're living, your city, your town, your state, your, your nation, your country, anywhere in this world. You don't take anything 
You aren't going to leave anything. You ain't going to take anything with you. But leave everything behind. Because everything will be burnt up with fire. Every man, everything that you see. <sighs> 600,000 passed by, died in unbelief. Wow. Some of you have to go to your pleasures, your sports, your entertainment, materialisms, because you don't have faith in God. You're not satisfied with the living waters and the bread of life. God is going to, you see, the people chase them like bees and quench that's fire and thorns. Some people are being quenched by the fire and thorns of people chasing them, by your enemies, by the sin. These things are happening. You're being quenched by the fire and the thorns. The thistles and thorns, but you're not to be delivered from it. You're not being tested by the refining fire so that you may be purified as, as purified metal, ready for, for God to come back. He's testing a people. This is the second exodus right now, guys. You're either ready right now or you're not. You're entering his rest or you're not. You will know if you're entering his rest. Well, brother, how do I know? I've said it. I said it. You will know. You'll know because the promised land is peace, love, joy, trust, and without fear. Without fear. Fear is of the devil. And any of you that is living in fear, perfect love casts out all fear. Yes, yes. But if you're living in fear, you're not walking with God. It's sinful. You're, you're walking in sin, guys, and unbelief is sin. You must have faith that God is going to deliver you in all things. Trust. Trust. I know what God has delivered me from. And every single time, I'm still here speaking. <laughs> all enemies have rose up against me, guys. I don't gloat, and I don't, I don't sit there and, and <sighs> wish anything to happen to me. But God delivers. God delivers. That's why he says, pray for your enemies in Luke 6, 27 through 36. He says, pray for your enemies. Do not curse them in Romans 12, 14. He says, do not curse them. Do not rejoice or your heart be glad in Proverbs 24, 17. Don't be rejoice and be glad that your enemies have fallen. Why? If you know the love of God, you're going to know God's trying to protect you so that you remain in that rest, you remain in that peace. You don't, rest, you don't desire harm to come upon your enemies, but God is already going to go before you. God is going to bring harm to your enemies. God, vengeance is his. Don't try to take vengeance in your own hands. Let it go. I wouldn't be speaking this if I wasn't tested still being tested oh man wow that's why he says in Proverbs 25 21 if an enemy is hungry or thirsty I mean give him something to drink this is New Testament as it is old this is Proverbs guys he says to give him something to drink love your enemy Anybody can love a friend, but the real test of love and the love of Yeshua, Jesus, is how you love your enemies. How you love your enemies. You have to know this, guys. I'm going to get this just a minute, but... Many times he would deliver them. They, however, were rebellious in their counsel and the instructions. They, they sank down in their sin, their iniquity. In Psalm 106, 43, people today are going back to their sins. Go back to their sins. In Psalm 18, 2, he says, I call upon the Lord, Adonai, who is worthy to be praised, and I am saved from my enemies. He will save you. Just as he saves, saves the poor, the poor in spirit, the poor in, in, in money, materialistic things, 
even the poor in spirit. God will save you. He delivers the, the righteous, the poor, the widows, the orphans. He delivers them. People that are orphaned from the world, people that have no friends, people that have been rejected and neglected, God will deliver you. He goes before you. You see, He has rescued us from our, our adversaries, our enemies, and His loving kindness is everlasting. Psalm 136, 24, God is good. Let Him be praised. He stands at the right hand of the needy to save Him for those who judge His soul. God will judge the wicked. He will judge your enemies. He goes before you. God is so good. We just have to remain in his presence. <sighs> just look in 2 Samuel twenty two forty nine. 49. Who also brings me out to, from my enemies. You even lift me above those who rise against me. You rescue me from the violent man. The violent man that's seeking the blood of your life, seeking everything and destruction of your life and the ruin of your life. God is before you. What do you have to do? I'm telling you, faith. You cannot walk in faith and be in sin, though. When you're walking in sin, you can't forgive your enemies. You can't forgive those that trespassed you. You can't, if you're physically in front of them today, you can't hug them, shake their hand and forgive them. He's not going to go before you. If you have doubt in your heart, you have doubt, doubt in your mind that these destruction or harm may come upon you. These things God cannot work through you. He cannot work through those that don't have faith. Psalm 97, 10. Hey, hey evil, you who love the Lord, Adonai, who preserve the souls of his godly ones, he delivers them from the hand of the wicked. He will deliver you. Deuteronomy 24. Oh, yes. The Lord your God is the one who goes with you to fight for you against your enemies to save you. Over and over and over. Samuel, Samuel, and Samuel, and David, David was delivered. So many people are delivered. You have to know what God has done. What he's going to do in your, 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 the presence. God is going to keep you in his presence. You just have to remain in his rest. God wants to keep you in his peace. He wants to enter his peace. David had a cry. He had a cry to God. He had a, a just a deep, agonizing cry. Not only did he love his enemies, he loved, he, he wanted to be delivered. You see sometimes God t t have vengeance on your enemies. You see things like God was, David was saying to smite your enemies and things like that, guys. But David was afflicted. He was hurt. He was pain. He was attacked. The world was against him, his kingdom, and he had so much upon him, leaving so many people, guys. But God, David still loved everyone. Man, what a heart of God. What a good heart of God. It just says, Exodus 14, 14, you just have, all you have to do, God will fight for you. All you have to do is be silent. All you have to do is be silent. God is already before you. Bless those that persecute you. And bless, do not curse them. Do not rejoice when your enemy falls and let your heart not be glad when he stumbles. God will cause them to be look like a hole. He will drag them as if it, they, he put a fish hook in their lips and drag them. He's going to make them look like fools. God is going to win. And he's already won. All you have to do is trust in him. Do not doubt in your heart, but believe in him. I love you guys. And do not fear be strong and courageous. Deuteronomy 31, 6. 
Do not fear or be in dread of the, or anyone that comes upon you. For it is the Lord Adonai, your God, who goes with you. He will never leave you or forsake you. This is New Testament as it is Old Testament, guys. Repeat it in both. But remember, without faith, you cannot be pleasing to God. And I pray that you remain in his presence, you remain in his peace. Trust him. Follow him. Yeshua HaMashiach, Jesus Christ the Messiah. He's the only way, the only truth, and the only life. You just have to believe in the word that became flesh. Trust in him. In all things, through all things, and believe all things. Through him, and by him, and with him. God has already won. I love you all. God bless you all. And shalom. I love you all. Thank you.